We are getting ready for uh, one of the best of fives that I mentioned before the break. I was like, is it Cure Special or is it Inno Sue? Well, it is going to oh, be yeah. Innovation versus Sue. And Sean, this is one where I feel good about my prediction. I am one and two so far. So Darius okay. is laughing straight to the bank. He's making fun of me already. And everybody <laughs> oh, yes, that sorry. predicted uh, true for Dario is like, yeah, Roddy is wrong. I have Inno wait, wait. here. And I you feel said like laughing to the bank to the bank is there is there like a trading market on roddy predictions can i actually yeah. like do like i can short rotterdam all day long <laughs> <laughs> well that is what dario did and he's he's getting away with it right what now. a jerk what a bear yeah you know the um in innovation versus sue I i'm not gonna tell a lie i'm a big fan of sue as a player and i, wa I want to hear more about the confidence you have in this prediction because this is one where i personally was like ah, i don't know uh, probably innovation uh. well we'll talk about it as soon as we have introduced oh, these yeah. lovely nerds as nightshade is going to be our first map for our fourth best of five of the day in the left top side we're looking in the main base of our blue terran player of course hailing from south korea it is innovation and or yonder in the bottom right of nightshade a legend of Zerg, who's also so sweet, saying good luck. It is Sue. <laughs> he did this yesterday as well with the dots. He did it to Drogo, where it's like, good luck, dot, dot, dot. Like, if people would do this to me on the letter, I would get nervous. I was like, okay. You, that's, what, that's when you send out two probes to scan. <laughs> yeah. You're like, all right, what is this asshole doing, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Why is he wishing me luck right now? Especially <laughs> when it's good luck, like 20 seconds into the game. If the game begins GLHF, that's a normal human. If the game begins and it's like, good luck. <laughs> Especially yeah. the ellipses. Well, I don't know. I guess I guess you are, you know, loading the crossbow, looking at your opponent going, uh, good luck, man, but I really hope you lose. <laughs> yeah. Now, to uh, go back to the question you asked me before we loaded into the game, where right. does my confidence for innovation come from? It just feels that Inno at this point is playing the kind of StarCraft where he can do random stuff and he will still win because he's that freaking good at this point. And this has been going on for like a month or two or three at this point. It just feels like he's he's on point with pretty much everything he does. Uh, he gets away with stuff. Macro is obviously always great for Inno. His multitasking and micro look great. He uses a whole bunch of different strategies. It's not one build where I'm like, oh yeah, Inno is really good with this build and he's going to do this build and win. Like, no. Inno is just good across the board. He's confident. I feel like he's loving Starcraft right now more than he's done in a very long time. And yeah, that's why I just kind of see him running away with this series. It, it actually can't be overstated just how much innovation has evolved in the last few months because like let's say that you follow starcraft kind of casually innovation's been around forever and there has been a million and one jokes about him being a robot forever the, the sort of story of innovation is he does the same thing every game but he just does the normal stuff better than you and that's how he pulls off the wins but he pulled off incredible wins like against um, he went 2-0-2-0 in the group of death, doing insane things like hidden expansions, one base all ins, tearing through Zest, then going up against Morrow, and doing a proxy two starport battle cruiser opening in Terran vs. Terran, and winning. And I'm looking at this, and a lot of times you can watch a game of StarCraft and not have the ID of the players up and get a pretty strong suspicion of who you're watching just by their gameplay. And all of those games, I was like, somebody put up the wrong graphics. This is not innovation. <laughs> right. What is happening? And it's that sort of, you know, lurking threat that would, I mean, frankly, that is my least favorite kind of player to play against, the unpredictable player. And then someone with innovations mechanics to back yeah. it up? Gross. Exactly, right? That's what completes the package there. That's what really completes the story, right? It's like, okay, a lot of players are unpredictable and a lot of players can pull off many different styles and strategies, but how good are they really with them? It seems like whatever innovation does, he is close to perfect with all of these builds. And he has been doing it for so long. Of course, Sue is a real veteran of the game too, but I think we can't overstate how impressive it is 
for innovation to be this high level for such a long time, winning tournaments throughout different versions of StarCraft 2, uh, looking great throughout the years. And sure, he had his little dips, but he always bounced back. And right now, I think we're riding an innovation high, man. Like the wave is going strong and I just don't see Sue stopping him here. Well, I mean, at this point in the game, as much as we've been lauding the recent creativity from innovation, things are looking pretty benign. We see some Reaper Hellion uh, opening just to contain a little bit of creep spread. We see the uh, Liberator getting produced to do a little combo harassment and creep depressuring work. Same thing over on Camp Sue doing the double Evo Chamber, no DRG style today. You know, this is looking, this is looking like a Terran Berserk. Mm -hmm. uh, the double Evo before going into Lair on Nightshade, I think is a little bit adventurous. Uh, this is a map where a lot of the Terran pushes. That's a lot of Hellions, by the way. Jeez, he's actually just going to try to get lucky here. The Queens are not blocking these Hellions. Oh, no, oh, John. Man. The Hellions and Reapers get in. They're going to settle for a couple drones, but I indeed go for the main, because that's when the, cre the Queens won't be able to catch up. There's a Liberator resting as well. Here we go. The Innovation Party has started, and he is already looking mighty fine in game one. What happened? This is not supposed to happen. Look how many Queens are there. They could have blocked all the entrances in. And now they're just going to be playing Ring Around the Rosie with these drones. At this point in time, nine drones have been picked off, but maybe even more significant, lost mining time at the third, lost mining time in the main. Liberators continuing to be annoying, and innovation, again, with those crisp mechanics. Unseizing, backing up the Liberator. And Sue sending out some, I guess, <laughs> a little bit of evaluatory Zerglings. Like, am I really screwed? Yes. Am I really out of this game yet? You're not gonna you're not gonna win with these Zerglings. This is just a check on the third. And you know what? It's a little bit reassuring to see that it's not there. And, and you know what's the worst part here for Sue is because he's playing double Evo before Lair, it means that bailing speed is long ways off at this point, right? That's just gonna take a super long time to ever get that going. Uh, so basically what's going to happen is that Innovation will soon have 20 plus Marines with a couple Metavacs and Stim and plus one and Combat Shield. And how do you fight that with just links? I mean, sure, they will have upgrades, but that's going to be so hard for Sue to survive. You know, there, there is something to be said, though, that when you have the upgrade advantage as Zerg, you are, are way more powerful than you think. Uh, you know, just 1-1 one, one versus 0-0 zero, zero is pretty considerable. I mean, you're, you're generally a Zerg used to being even, or maybe slightly behind. I do think Sue can maybe pull off some magic if he if he keeps getting these upgrades going. He finishes his 1-1 and his layer timing, despite the disruption, is pretty good. Yes, it was actually a bit quicker than expected. And I also got to say that I thought more than nine drones were going to fall, right? The queens were out of position. The Hellions were already in. I was like, oh, my goodness, line them up. You know, this is going to be minus close to 20 drones is what I expected there. So Sue handled that well. But you mentioned as well, maybe more importantly, was the amount of lost mining time. His gold order really got disrupted very seriously. And these are fights that are already very hard to take, man. There's Widow Mines in the mix. Widow Mine gets a decent shots off on the queen the second one doesn't connect with that many zerglings uh, i mean it's just going to be really hard for sue to find a silver lining in all of this but if he can survive until he gets bailing speed then indeed it becomes a pretty playable game again relatively swift macro hash in the main base for sue making sure that he can uh, you know really leverage those fast zergling upgrades i love this expansion placement for innovation it's a little easier to wall this one side and trust that your rally point will cover the other side uh it's very aggressive positioning from innovation it does sort of necessitate that innovation be incredibly aggressive we see innovation for following up that logic with one set of medevacs on the left another set of medevacs at the top trying to like you know box in the creep spread from two angles uh, good job there by Sue, not taking any massive mine hits yet. He still has to worry about it, and he's obviously having a very tough time defending his creep. I gotta say, I expected some of these mines to get bigger hits off than they got so far, so Sue is actually handling a, lo handling a lot of this very well, because he doesn't have that much to work with, right? It's just mostly circlings, a few random banelings there. He's still obviously behind in supply, but as long as he can keep four bases up and running, hey, we're one Zergling counterattack or a Bingling run by away from Sue actually being in a pretty decent spot. But this is still going to be really hard, having to fight off creep against all these Widow Mines as well. Once again, not the craziest Widow Mine connections, though. 
Yeah, yeah. And Zerglings are still continuing to push forward for Sue. I can't tell if it's distracted or deliberate. Oh, no. It looks like it was maybe distracted over at the right side. We see more Marauder, excuse me, more Marine medevac action. Wait, gosh. Remember that thing I said about 1-1 Marines? 1-1 Zerglings being pretty good against 1-1 Marines? Wow, Sue is showcasing that a little bit here. And 2-2 is close on the heels. Yep, he even got a pretty good fight indeed on the left side with just those Zerglings against those Marines there, getting a full surround off, and there will be a little upgrade advantage, but Innovation is not trailing that far behind. I, yeah, I'm honestly pretty impressed with Sue in this game. I don't like his position. I think he's still kind of on the, the back foot here, and he's going to have a tough time really transitioning out of this Ling Bane phase. And don't forget, it's just Ling Bane. There's no Hydras here. There's also no Mutalisk harassing or picking up reinforcements. So being down 30 supply, it's bad. And this is a fight that's going to be very, very difficult for Sue to win. This time it's more than just two or three Widow Mines. Baneling is getting sniped on the right side. Where are the additional Banelings? There they oh. are. Zerglings just sweep around, giving the big Zerg hug to the Marines. But unfortunately, Innovation had too many, was able to just stand there and wail on the Marines. And when the Banelings arrived, it was a little too late. The fifth, uh, the fifth expansion gets canceled. It's still three base versus four base. The Hive is about halfway done, and Innovation is now going to be peeling into the upgrade lead with 3-3 coming yeah. on the way. And yeah, I mean, it can't be stressed enough, Ruddy. Nothing but Ling Bane is the yeah. only units that can be made by Sue right now. And that's okay if you have like 40 supply more of it than the Terran has, but it's actually the other way around. Innovation has 110 army supply at this point. Stu only 41. These few Banelings, that's pretty much all that Stu has to offer to Innovation in this game, and that is just not going to be enough. Hive is close to finishing up. We've got more Banes finishing up now, but the splitting by Inno, even if it's on trip, is really good. The Marauders did a great job there in soaking up a couple of these Banelings. And Sean, are you convinced about the Innovation hype train yet? Because he looked good in this game. I refuse to say it. I'm not going to do it, Kevin. You can't make... Okay, GG Innovation wins. <laughs> 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 you know, I, I really feel like this is maybe one of the most uncomfortable situations to be in in a game of StarCraft. Because let's say that you did some sort of um, early aggression. Maybe you were going to try to harass with Widow Mind Drops. And you just miscontrolled and lost the medevac. If later you lose the game, there's just this glaring clarity in your head, like, oh yeah, just don't lose the the medevac. That was really bad. But when you play a game where you more or less got to do what you wanted to do, you got the early Evo chambers, you got disrupted a little bit from the Hellions, but that's not a very uncommon experience. And then just time passed and you lost. I mean, that is a really uncomfortable feeling because you want it, it's almost easier when there's a blunt thing to point to. I messed that thing up. And if you're Sue, I think that if you want to go for Ling Baneling, you have to have a perfect opening. You have to have flawless defense. You can't have any holes because it's not like with Mutalist where you can maybe harass, pick off some SCVs. You have just your creep to work with. Yeah, I wonder if that was the plan all along for Sue, or if it's, or if he was like, oh, this start was a bit too rough. I lost an insane amount of mining time. I lost like nine or ten drones as well. Yeah, I cannot go into Mutas here. If I go into Mutas, then he's just going to push me with Marines, and I won't have enough things. Yeah, yeah. So maybe he was kind of forced to stay on Ling Bane. But if you are playing Ling Bane, we've seen it in the past. What basically needs to happen is that you need to have an insane amount of Zerglings running around, picking up reinforcements, going for run buys, links in the natural, links in the third, or Bane links blowing up depots. None of that ever happened. Basically, it was Sue defending on Ling Bane. And against someone like Innovation, that's never going to get the job done. Innovation with just precise, clean play. And I mean, the structure of how he built the third and the timing that he took the third and the positioning of all the units, it just worked really nicely together. It's one of the core mistakes you can make as a Terran player trying to play standard, where you have a little harassment force going off to the side, and then you leave this big hole in the middle defensively that Zerglings can slip through. No such little tiny counterattacks had any opportunity to do anything in that game. Just really elegant by Eno. Let's see if our Zork player can get off to a better start in game two as we are loading into a simulacrum and we can already see an SCV leaving the main base. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's like, you know what? Day nine and Roddy have a long day. Eight best of five. So I'll try to speed run this a little bit <laughs> in the left top side. We're looking at the main base of our blue Terran player. He's up 1 0. It is innovation. In the bottom right, needs to have some substantial changes to the gameplay to pull off wins against innovation. It's the Zerg Hero Sue. 
Oh, Overlord? Overlord? Oh, seize the barracks immediately. I would send a drone. Yes, who's going to send a drone? Wow, okay. Well, that's is a right. pretty promising start for Sue. And on to game three. Yeah, I mean, this is this is all going to come down to the SCV positioning. Will it sit on the outside of the barracks? Will it sit on the inside? Right. It got scouted so quickly. I don't see how you ever complete this barracks, right? There's no way. RNG is good, well, but it can't be this good. Now there's going to be two drones as well. This barracks is not going to complete. Innovation oh my is gosh, look at this. Look at this SCV. It's like in the perfect position. How Get long is it going to stay? Out of there. Oh, uh, and there. The SCV, it goes down. That is a huge win for Sue. Not just picking off the SCV, but Innovation continuing to commit. Okay, this double is big. Drone. Yeah, the, the oh, second SCV yeah. come, and that's the sweet spot right there. So in the end, this barracks will complete. I can't believe. <laughs> <laughs> Whose spray is that? What? <laughs> that's amazing. Oh, essence. Oh, man. Yeah, you, you, you don't like to see it as Sue. You do not like to see that. I mean, granted, Sue doesn't really have to do anything too crazy to deflect this reaper but innovation just kind of going into something very very traditional just getting a factory getting a command center you know what's interesting oh just one yeah mm -hmm. is that obviously Sue's plan initially was to go for hatchery first that's where the drone was heading then he spotted the barracks and he's like all right i'll send the drone to the barracks immediately which i think is the correct call because you're delaying the barracks you picked up the SUV. but then he went pool and gas before the hatch so all of a sudden this is obviously not the most economic opening for sue anymore and now i wonder if he's going to do something with the amount of gas that he has already mined because he has zirkling speed on the way well there we have it okay Ooh. yeah he had zirkling speed on the way he had a hundred gas in the bank he didn't drop that baning nest inside of the reaper but innovation is a world-class Terran player there's a good chance that he clicked on the extractor and then he's like wait a minute you've already mined 200 gas you know you, you don't need 200 gas for zirkling speed so what are you doing sue and also the fact that sue sees that it's command center so early which means that the factory has to be delayed and because the barracks was constructed on the other side of the map the factory has to build its own reactor. I mean, perhaps Sue just goes for some sort of bus. We see Zerglings yeah, in production. Sure. Zerglings going cross map. This this could just be the opportunity that Sue has to pull off a winning game too. There's yeah. there they are. And since Innovation didn't reinforce his wall, like yeah, he's got a what wall? He's building a fusion core. Okay, Innovation did not click on the gas. He did not see how much gas was mined there. Now obviously Hellions have a lot of micro potential. But this is going to be a lot of Zerglings and Banelings to deal with very quickly. <laughs> and the first two Hellions are not even out yet. Okay, he's going to reinforce it right now. Is it oh. in time? It's so close. Oh, no. Oh. no. Oh. What? Okay, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. The engineering bay is not enough. And if any of you wondered what a timing is, this is it. Before any Hellions were out, before there was any additional defense, Sue just bombs straight up and can continue to pressure. And... At this point in time, mules at the front going down, four SCVs have fallen. And yeah, I mean, these Hellions can get controlled and eventually pick things off, but oof, big Baneling. Rewall. It's, it's, if Innovation would rewall right now, he would actually be in a pretty decent spot, I think. Being only down five workers, Innovation, you want to rewall. There's more Zerglings. He's really committing to this. He still hasn't rewalled. I find that shocking. Or maybe he doesn't want to rewall. He's like, I've got four Hellions, but you don't really want to lose more SCVs than you've already lost, though. I mean, as Sue, are you just committed to building nothing but Zerglings until you hopefully win? I mean, there's a ticking clock right now. Innovation has battle cruiser tech available. Just needs to finish this tech lab. We see a pair of Banelings coming from the top side. One gets eliminated, the second gets eliminated. And at this point in time, it's 12 workers to 24. Careful transitioning to workers now. Sue is building seven back home. Might be able to pick off some of these Hellions. Still dealing damage to the workers in the main base. Yeah, a lot of the mules have obviously they got picked off in the front, like you mentioned. So it's not just that having 12 SCVs, there are some moments where it's like, well, if it's 12 against 20, you have double warp to command. That's actually somewhat playable when <laughs> still with the banter. Uh, I was surprised. I felt that innovation could have rewalled at one point, and I think that yeah, would have yeah. saved an additional four or five SCVs. And I think that would have had a very big impact on how this game was going to play out. 
Now I think that Su is most likely going for a Spire on two bases, right? Like he's scouted everything that he needs to scout. Yep. We can already see him getting the lair, so I'm expecting him to take additional gases. And then a two base Spire against the BC opening. I think that's pretty good. You know, there's this experience that every Zerg player has, which is you get excited because you're being aggressive. But Zerg production is different than the other races in that you have to choose what to do with the larva. Are you a drone or are you a unit? So anytime you do some sort of early aggression, you've also completely shot yourself in the foot economically. So it winds up being really, really challenging to figure out ways to transition out of the aggression back into macro. And that's the thing I really admire about the way that Sue handled this opening. He built maybe one, maybe even two more rounds of Zerglings than the average bear would. And it wasn't with the intention of winning the game. It was with the intention of just getting enough time and doing enough damage that then it's safe to transition out. Yeah. And we see Sue just looking a lot like a normal Zerg player. And this is this is really hard. I feel like every Zerg player goes all in once, feels good, loses, and then wish that they'd macroed, and then just never goes all in again. No, I think you're spot on, especially because at first I was like, wait a minute, okay. Uh, we have, do have a battle cruiser, by the way, showing up in the main base, getting the first couple of drones. But the start of the daming bust, I was like, okay, it's bad, but, you know, and I was like, wait a minute, he's got two Hellions out now. He's not losing that much. Sue has a really bad economy. It's two base Zerg. I was like, this is actually very playable, but the extra Zerglings, the extra Banelings that showed up a little bit later, they are what, or they were what made this a successful attack in the end for Sue. And now obviously he's sitting with a 20 worker advantage. He's gonna get that Spire. Uh, he's gonna be able to shut down these battle cruisers quite convincingly, I think. I mean, this is kind of Sue's game at this point. I mean, having such a massive economic lead, knowing what's going on, knowing what you're playing against. I feel like innovation has to pull off some real magic if he wants to turn this one around. Yeah, with the Spire done, this sort of overcomes one of the biggest hurdles Zerg has for much of the early and mid game, which is Zerg doesn't have good anti-air except for Queens, which means there's not really any offensive anti-air. I mean, Hydras shoot up, Nautilus shoot up, but you need like a, a critical mass of them before they actually feel good. So the Battle Cruiser is good both as a harassment tool that, that can then pull back and against a standard Zerg, yeah, they're not going to be sending Queens cross map to kill me. But now we see with the, the, the speed of the fire is, excuse me, the speed of the spire is quick, relatively speaking. Um, so there's going to be a lot of opportunity for these Mutalists to actually deal harassment damage and for these battle cruisers to just be kind of ineffectual. You know, I'm going to be a little biased here, and I kind of hope that these Mutas fly into like two Widow Mines. I know that's a bit brutal, but. That's, that's mean. Okay, I, know, I know, I know, I know. That's attitude, man. But, but let me finish, okay, Sean? Let me finish. Okay, I'm sorry. Because I feel sorry. like innovation needs some time to turn this into a competitive game. Because right now he's obviously in a very rough spot. He's down quite far economically. So he needs to catch a break. And then I think we'll get a very back and forth game where, sure, Sue might still be ahead, but I think it becomes playable. At this point, this doesn't look that playable to me. Like, yeah, okay, he's got some anti to deal with the Mutas, but he's down a lot of supply. Wow, two Yamatos go up. Okay, it's not quite Widow Mines, but I'll take it. <laughs> so if we look at the right uh, center expansion for Sue, there's two evolution chambers there, but I think Sue is going in, into a little bit of autopilot mode. We have Baneling Nest number two. Yeah. Now, if you're doing an economic play, you often do go for like double Evo Baneling with some delay. But if you did a Baneling bus early, you don't necessarily need to build a second Baneling nest. So I feel like this is one of these funny kind of auto-piloting <laughs> I moments. was like, where are you first. going with this? I was like, this is totally fine. He's building two Evos. And I was like, right, oh, right. yeah, he Baneling busted. Exactly. You need a Baneling yeah, nest. Yeah, right? Like <laughs> but, you know, I actually, I'm not 100% sure if Sue was even aware of the fact that he's playing against Mech. He hasn't scouted all these factories yet. Uh, yep. His army is obviously good against Bayer. Now, I do know that Sue likes to play Mudas against Battle Cruisers. We've seen this before as we have Widow Mine Battle Cruiser attack here. Innovation with more random stuff. But hey, let's yes. see if he can get some good damage done. Yeah, it looks like Innovation's been enjoying co op commander with this unit composition, right? We see the mass Widow Mine Battle Cruiser burrow, unburrow, burrow, unburrow. Try to not get too many Zergling shots to go off on these. But I mean, great micro by Sue trying to ensure that, yes, the mines don't connect with the Mutalists. The mines don't really connect with anything of value. And Sue just repels this with ease. 
Yeah, that could have been gnarly, like if you take a bad engagement there and then suddenly like you run out of Zerglings very quickly or the Queens take a lot of damage or the Mudas clump up and they are low on HP. But now the Mudas are all still full on HP. Innovation barely has any anti air. The Missile Turret goes down. I think that this is going to be it. Sue, so, oh. like he is about to take game two. If that battle cruiser goes down, there is just no and anti air left. And Mutalisks now. Oh, oh. question mark, Sue. Sue, oh, everyone's confused. You know, I, I almost want to just type a question mark in the game. <laughs> Go for it, yeah. John. I won't stop you. GG gets oh, called, man. and Sue will tie off the series. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, just a question mark is always a good one. It's always an excellent maneuver. <laughs> Innov innovation popularized the question mark during the uh, Stay at Home Story Cup, which was also uh, sponsored by Shopify, which is also yeah. a sponsor of this event. They have been kind of carrying the scene lately. It's fantastic to see. We love having them. Uh, but yeah, Inno was basically dropping question marks every single game, whether he was winning or losing. He just kept on dropping them. Oh my gosh. And you know what's funny as well? It's like whenever somebody does that, there's so people who really take it out of context. People come in the streams like, what do you think about innovation's bad manners during the stay at home story cup? And I was like, oh, come on, it's innovation, okay? You're not gonna yeah. find a sweeter guy. Like, he's just having some fun. Let him get away with a question mark or two. And it's it's kind of funny when you contrast the StarCraft II scene in 2010, 2011 with like, say, the last three years, where in 2010, 2011, the top eight of each tournament had a completely different roster of players. Yeah every single time. It was volatile, there was a lot of change, uh, you know, because people were still figuring out the game. If you discovered that Hellions were good against workers, you got to win that tournament, and then everyone else figured out that too. And then, oh my gosh, did you realize that drops actually do damage with war prisms? Oh, wow. And now, in the last few years, it's just kind of been the same players at the absolute top echelons of the game. I mean, the skill ceiling has just continued to grow to the point where a lot of these people are just doing nothing but playing against each other all day. The best pl players to practice with are the players that are in the top of the GSL, are the players who are going deep in WCS. And there's just been this delightful camaraderie that's wonderful to see. And like you were saying, if you're if you're on the outside looking in, you're like, every player here is a bastard. <laughs> like, <laughs> me, I'm like, no, they're really good friends. He's, yeah, he's, yeah. he's a sweet guy, he's darling, he's darling as human being. Oh, I mean, uh, they're, they are good buddies. They always travel together. They hang out yeah. with each other. Like, I see them in the hotels, you know, and they're sitting there always sharing the same table. They're always memeing with each other. Like, that's yeah. something that we often don't see that much in the foreign scene. But the Koreans are not different than the pro gamers from Europe or North America, right? Like, they like to poke fun at each other. They like to spit yeah. memes. They joke around just like we do. But, you know, it's, it's funny when you suddenly get to see innovation dropping question marks. And you're like, whoa, but it's like, no. They are good friends. They're just having fun, making the best of everything. Eternal Empire is going to be the map for the third game in this series. The right top side, you have the man that many predicted to win this series trio. That's not what it's going to be, but let's see if you can still end up winning it. It is innovation. And in the bottom left, the double baneling nest into no baneling speed research was the key <laughs> to victory in game two. The Zerg hero, Sue. Yeah, I, I notice when I have a lot of uh, or I've watched a lot of games in a row already when I'm like, well, what's so surprising about the Baning Nest? Like, Baning Nest are really good in ZVT, Sean. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, he Baning busted in the beginning of the game. It's, I was like, it, it, it's an error. I will describe it as an error that only the best of pros can make because, like, you know, there's this um, idea of chunking when you get to some level of expertise that it's not that a player goes, okay, I'm going to just build this building and this building and this building. They're not three different buildings. It's the moment in the game where you, as one chunked movement, go Evo, Evo, Bailey Nest. <laughs> and, you know, if you're a pro, you basically have taken these really complex strategies and you've kind of chunked them together. Like a Zerg player right now will probably know the multiple queen Zergling speed and this number of drones opening against Terrani. You just do that, and that's just one logical unit. And then you just wind up getting a little bit flustered, and you're like, all right, time to play excellently. Playing at 8,000 APM, going around building your second bailing nest because you're, <laughs> you're just following along with what you do in other games really really interesting to watch yeah i think the double twilight is a classic or the i open up with an oracle so you you make an oracle you lose it eventually and you're like oh no the zerg goes mutas i need stargates and it's like 
you actually you you open up with a stargate you know you already had one you could have gone straight fleet beacon with some phoenix range something yeah, that yeah. You, you'll see at every level it happens to and all of us I mean, wow even in brood war the multiple observatories were happening mm -hmm. Ooh, this is cute a bunker yes a salvageable but, building at the bottom what's also cute is that roach warrant that's not no what what innovation just lost the reaper oh that was a lag spike that's actually really unfortunate Oh, oh, it's okay. innovation. Okay. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, well, it looks like uh, there's a clear reason why the Reaper was lost. It may have yeah. been the innovation's connection okay. for a moment there. So this is terrible in many ways because innovation is still in the game, Sean. And obviously somebody losing oh. their Reaper to lack, that really stinks. But to make things a million times worse, there's a Roach Warrant going up in the back of the main base that innovation now will never be able to scout. And innovation is actually, like, I don't speak Korean. They were communicating wow. with each other. Now innovation said, go, go. And Sue said, okay. go, go. So the game will continue, but this is, I actually feel bad because normally losing the Reaper, you'd be like, oh yeah, that stinks. But if you have a normal game, who cares? But he's actually being all in. So now losing that Reaper could be game ending. And that's really sad. Yeah, I mean, Roach Warren at this phase of the game for Zerg, oh, no. you don't really have a lot of drones. And if you start building Roaches, I mean, they eat up your money so quickly. And the 25 gas can honestly be a little bit deceptive. It can make you feel like you, you know, are just doing your normal economic things, building Roaches as you can. But each collection of Roaches you build adds up. And you get to the point where, well, there's 100 gas that could have been a layer. There's 100 gas that could have been an upgrade, you know? So... At this position, Sue just needs, needs, needs to deal massive damage. And with no Reaper on the map to scout on the other side, I mean, Innovation is picking off Zerglings at the far top left. This is brilliant by Sue to distract yeah. this Reaper. So apparently there was a second Reaper, which is a little bit uncommon. You see it once in a while. Now, this Reaper is going to take control of the Zelnaga Watchtower. So at least Inno gets a five or six seconds heads up that Roaches are coming. I would say evacuate the low ground immediately, and that's what he's going to do. And he's going to try to build a bunker on the high ground. But this is a big commitment by Sue. He made a lot of circlings. He made a lot of roaches. He's still building Ooh. units behind all of this. So calling this an all in is pretty fair. Oh no, a Hellion spawns on the wrong side of the wall. Oh no, and we have a Ravager down to continue to pick away at the wall. But behind this, look, Sue's building a third base. Sue is adding on drones and economic follow-up. But this is definitely enough to deal some severe damage. Five workers down, six, seven workers, some Zerglings to reinforce. We see the Widow Mines complete. They're going to walk to the back side. And oh, Innovation is going to have to have every single SCV at the front. Widow wow. Mines managed to do some big damage. There's yeah. just a single Roach and single Ravager. And in this situation as innovation, you might have a brief moment where you go, whew, we held it off. But then look at the worker tab, 29 to 19. Brilliant transitioning by Sue. But it is triple orbital, Commando. It is triple orbital. I gotta say, all things considered that happened in the game, losing the first Reaper, seeing this as late as innovation did, this is actually still pretty playable. Steam is almost done. Uh, I'm actually surprised that Widowmine hit was massive and I was so worried about friendly fire. I was like, oh no, he's gonna lose like 10 SCVs to this widow mine. Did not happen. I mean, call me crazy, but I actually really like this game for innovation right now. He's got freaking Stim. He's got Stim, he's got Hellions out on the maps too, lost all of his Zerklings. So he's gonna have to rebuild Zerklings, which is also bad for his economy. I think it's quite all right. Well, at this point in time, 1-1 one, one upgrades are going to be the big advantage for Sue. No layer started, no Banely Nest, no, no nothing else. Just macro, macro, macro. Innovation similarly is saying, well, yeah, no, if I can't really attack anytime soon, may as well have some upgrades going on behind it. And if someone walked in right now, they might be a little confused by one or two things, but it doesn't even really look like an attack happened this game. No, it Trying looks somewhat normal. normal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, okay, it's double evil before Lair against uh, a triple orbital command opening. You'd be a little surprised to be like, Stim is done. Okay, like that's kind of quick. Uh, does he have a lot of units to use Stim with? Like, no, not really. The starport is not even done yet. I actually thought that the three Hellions we saw earlier, they could have gotten those few drones because there really was nothing there for Sue. Obviously, there was that annoying queen that soaked up a lot of the shots. But it felt that those Hellions could have gotten a little more down, maybe force out a few more units, but... 
Yeah, I don't know. I, I think it's okay for, you know, obviously the big battles are going to evolve around the fourth base of Soup. Uh, it's important for Sue to start getting some creep right towards the right side of that hatchery because we already know in the Eternal Empire a lot of fighting takes place near that fort base. You want to get creep there. Yeah, I mean, like, without that much Hellion pressure, Sue, in theory, could be able to spread a lot of creep out. But keep in mind, that's another consequence of going roaches aggressively early on. You don't have a ton of queens that are out there spreading creep like you would if you did a Zergling base opening. So Sue actually has some catch-up to do in that regard. No, he absolutely does. Spire goes down as well. That's cool, because we didn't see a Spire at all on the Nightshade, where it was just like, yeah. Ling Bane, Ling, <laughs> Ling Bane, Ling Bane, Ling Bane, and eventually that was not enough. This is, of course, a fantastic map for Mudas. It's so long. The Mudas will always be able to find some openings, pick up reinforcements. They'll force out a whole bunch of turrets as well. Innovation is moving out, though, with a real army for the first time. Baneling speed is not done yet, and there isn't a lot of creep on the right side of this hatchery. This is not the kind of hatchery where it's like, it'd be cool if you keep it alive, but if you lose it, it's no big deal. Like, no, that'd be a massive deal. Stu needs yeah. to keep this hatch alive, and he knows it. 2-2 two, two started for Zerg, 1-1 one, one wrapping up for Terran as well. The Zerglings are scooping things more towards the creep, and there's ugh, a dirty Baneling. <laughs> that was... Excuse me, a dirty mine hit picking off all those bane links. That's pretty decent. Sue does keep his head. Oh, cross the ball. It's an ambitious cross the ball. I like I like how he defended it for a split second and he's like, all right, that's it. 14 more uh, drones because that's what I need. I need a massive economy. If I want to make this style work against someone like Innovation, I'm going to need a fantastic economy. He's going to take that rich Vespian Geyser as well, which is obviously is insane for Zerg. That's so many extra banglings and so many more Mudas. I am worried that maybe he got a bit too carried away. But hey, if Sue can shut down this push, then he's in a pretty good position. But this is a strong army to face. There are Hellbats. They are quite clumped up, though. And the Banelings getting Ooh. some decent connections. But were those all the Banelings? No, we have nine more. I mean, we saw this with Traverse TY. You have to be so precise with your flank timing. Otherwise, the Terran player just kills this half of the army and then kills that half of the army. These Zerglings that are behind can help. And now here's a nice pincer hitting from both sides. Innovation's going to be able to pull up and retreat and retain a lot of these units. But more importantly for Sue, Sue has kept the expansion alive, has Mutalus coming, 2-2 two -two en route for both players, Drilling Claws now getting researched for Terran. And Innovation, dude, you were talking about this like a real clairvoyant, right? How important it is to have creep on the outside lip, on this high ground rim that surrounds this entire map. Because of attacks like this? Yeah. Obviously, you don't need to necessarily only keep the right side of your fort base safe. You also need to keep uh, basically six o'clock safe. Because if Marines are on the high ground there or there's a tank, you can't even use that base on the low ground because your drones are going to be very exposed. Stu didn't see this army coming in, but Stu does have a lot of Zerglings and Bailings still. So he should be able to clean this up. Let's see how good of a cleanup it's going to be. Look at those two, two upgrades. He's waiting for it. Man, it is so close. <clears throat> Excuse me, so close for both these players. But really, if I'm the Zerg, I'm a little happier that I have 2-2. Two, two. I think the Terran is to have 2-2. Two, two. I mean, Banelings with that plus 2 attack damage is just uh -oh. so much pain. There is a drop, though, in the back of the natural of Sue. And Sue is way out of position. He's not capable of dealing with it. It's just a lot of Marines. So a couple drones have gone down. And this will also allow Innovation to use that other army he still has on the right bottom side of the map. He is once again getting in range of that drone line. He gets a cancel on that base at 6 o'clock. Well done. Some really good play. No, Sue, I don't know if you want to fight this. Sue does want to fight it. Ooh. But it's a bad fight with the Mudas. This is a real challenge for the Zerg player. Innovation does this a lot, where he's on three base for quite a while. I mean, we see this fourth command center moving out, but he is not doing rapid expansion that we see other Terran players do. Innovation often just favors constant poking, constant pinching with these uh, Marine medevac troops. We see at the bottom side, a single tank gets picked off, and Sue uh, is trying to choose. Do I want to try to keep this fifth alive? Do I want to pick <laughs> off the army? Innovation is so good at just this obnoxious positioning. Now, what I'm a bit worried about is that we still don't have an infestation pit. And yeah. that means that, obviously, Hive... Oh, Bailix actually on the right side getting some oh, good wow. connections with those Marines. Well done there by Sue. Afterburner was used pretty early, so it is almost out. And, oh, no, that full medevac does not get eliminated. Marines continue to get dropped. Innovation technically peeled back. But, dude, that comment you just made, Roddy, super essential. 
you know, as the saying goes, if you get a fast 1-1, one, one, it's useless if you don't also have a fast 2-2. Two, two. And it's kind of also true when going 2-2 two, two to 3-3. Three, three. If you are doing anything fast upgrade focused, it's not about getting the specific timing of a set. It's about finishing the set of upgrades, about finishing 3-3 three, three very, very, very quickly, and then incidentally taking, uh, you know, attack opportunities as the upgrades finish along the way. Because right now, Innovation's Army is about to become so tanky. He's got a lot of Widermines there with Drilling Claws. A couple of these Veilings are going to be forced to cancel as well. Innovation is suddenly starting to look pretty damn good in this game with those 3 3 upgrades more than halfway done. He is going to get in a good position here as well. This is so awkward for so many Zerglings to fight. Stu, you need to come in from the right side as well. There's no way you can just come in from one angle at this point against all those Widermines. That's not the way. Well, those Veiling can actually. Ooh. <laughs> well. I mean, the more that Terran pulls back, the more there are mines, tanks, more reinforcements. Sue trying to hit before the next train of Marine Marauder hits. But no, huge Widow Mine. The Baneling count is getting lower and lower. The Utilist count also shrinking. But it looks like it is just barely, barely enough. No afterburners available on those medevacs. So it looks like Innovation is just going to take an opportunity to unload, shoot, and then pull back. Checking the unit count, seven mutalisks remain, and that's it. Almost no bane. This has been a very, very strong continuous pressure from innovation. It went better for Sue than I thought it would, to be completely honest. I was like, oh yeah. no, he's going to run into the meat grinder. We're going to see fireworks of Vito Mines. But in the end, Sue was able to clean it up. And he even got the bonus pickoffs with all those meta effects. The big problem is that was 2-2 two, two bio. From now on, it's going to be 3-3 three, three bio. That high tech felt very late. It is uh, done at this point. So Sue can actually start these upgrades. The one thing that Sue has, though, is that he's had a better economy. He's been sitting on a lot of money going off this far against Ling Bane. Whoa, Trader Mines as well, killing Metavax here. How is Sue doing so well? Off creep, down two upgrades. Fantastic Mutalisk spreading. The Banelings just continue to roll in. And as the Marines begin to pierce forward, if the Zergling Baneling count falls low enough, you need hardly any Marines to repel these Mutalisks. With the scan in the main base, Sue sees that yes, the Hive is done, but look, Adrenal Glands has not been started. Only just now does Ground Carapace Level 3 get started. And it can't be stressed enough just how good 3-3 three, three Marines are, Roddy. They're unbelievable. Yeah, when I think of these kind of games, now obviously there is a hype, but I always think back of like the J-Dong against Bolt series that we used to have in like 2014, where it was always yeah. like, J-Dong's winning, J-Dong's winning. And then Bolt had like 3-3 three, three upgrades and J-Dong was still on Middle Link Bane. And then eventually 3-3 three, three was just too much to deal with. It's like, oh my God, we don't mind. <laughs> Bio is so good against Zerg because we never saw Hive in these days. Now there is a high for Sue. It is also worth mentioning that he lost one of his Evo chambers, so he can start both upgrades at the same time. The Mutas are actually getting some good harassment done on the top side of the map. Contrast this with the Clem double mine, double turret sort of defense that just feels invincible against all compositions. Sue's gonna be forced to cancel this bottom right expansion, but you know, that actually feels kinda okay. There's been yeah. some good damage that was dealt. Uh, maybe no on the cancel. Banelings rolling in off Crete. An endless marine train steps forward. And Sue is going to regret that. Sue is carefully trying to peel back to the remainder of the Crete. The Mutalists are still finding more and more value. I mean, Sue has been doing an incredible job with these Mutalists. This has been yeah, Absolutely. Really this is supposed to be a scary phase in the game, right? Oh, it's like, how do you survive? How do you get good fights? Well, Sue just keeps on getting good little fights. Even that tiny skirmish on the right side, he rolls in three Banelings, he gets three Widow Mines, and forces the army to retreat a little bit. These are all pretty decent traits. Uh, Sue has been sitting on money for a long time. That bank is kind of gone at this point. But hey, he's got all the big upgrades. And look at that. He's got plus three flyer attacks for Mudas on the way. That's also not something I see in the majority of the ZVTs. Yeah, I mean, maybe Sue is just claiming, you know what? I am just going to be going Mutalisks for way, way longer. They've been giving me a lot of value. Innovation's big weak points have been his expansions and counterattacks to those. And Sue actually looks pretty stable. He's not, uh, his creep spread has continued to grow. This uh, army on the right side looks a little vulnerable. We see Sue carefully positioning with Bane Links to also hold off on the left. Innovation, really good at spotting spreading everything out. More Banelings going to be needed to deflect this push. But, uh, I mean, how do you allocate your army to Sue here? 
Yeah, this is that tough phase, right? Where he was still down those upgrades. Oh no, that Eva chain. Okay, it is gonna survive, but that's so close, by the way. It's like four seconds away in that Evo. Okay. Oh, it finishes. That's so oh close. That's a plus three upgrade. That's ridiculous. There are a lot of Ailings trying to connect with bio units on the right side, but it does feel that Inno is kind of overrunning Stu at this point. But Inno is also getting very adventurous. Get that Evo chamber, Inno. That's the one you want. You can definitely cancel that one, and he is going to cancel that one. I mean, that's a big, well, right? Innovation? Well, so. okay. Oh my god, the mines just annihilated the mutalisks. Only down to eight mutalisks, all in the red health, and now Sue's gonna start swarming in with things. Down at the bottom right hand side, Innovation has another endless stream of Marines coming in, picking off this bottom right base. Yes, does manage to annihilate the base. The Banelings trying to roll in, trying to do a little bit of backup. The natural expansion is gone. The mutalisk count is low. Nine more mutalisks coming in, and there's this kind of weird trio of bases. That Sue's trying to, you know, cobble some army together with. But look at this. Innovation has top left, top mid, has top center expansion. There's planetary fortresses everywhere. And in the main base of Innovation, there is a crap load of structures. <laughs> he, has, <laughs> he has so many structures. I felt for the saving grace for Sue in this game for quite some time was the economy, right? He was always rich. He always had a lot of drones. He always had a lot of bases. Now he doesn't even have that anymore. And then I just don't really see a way for Sue to turn this one around. Uh, the army of innovation should be able to trade better. There is a lot of Widow Mines here in the mix. And they get some decent shots off. But this is kind of it. This is everything that Sue has at this point. Meanwhile, innovation has units at home. Units retreating here. And a bunch of units as well on the right bottom side of the map. Making sure that Sue is not getting another base up and running. Sue's going to try to do something with this force. Sue has an inferior army. He's fighting Lings and Bane Lings off creep. The Mutalists are going to try to do their best to pick off this uh, planetary fortress. Widow Mines burrowing. Oh my god, with those with those drilling claws. Widow Mines burrow so fast. I mean, maybe Sue can pull a miracle with these Mutalists, but already at the bottom center, we see more Marines picking off the expansion. Queens desperately trying to pick off these medevacs because there is no way these queens are going to be able to deal damage. They have zero, zero upgrades, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they will be able to stay alive for a long time because they yeah, are right. queens. So <laughs> that's uh, that's the good part there. But I think Stu knows that the writing is on the wall for this game as well. You obviously don't want to give up yet. It's important to keep that ultra list cavern alive because it's actually, uh, I want to say burning down, but it's bleeding out, I guess, is the right way to put it. This is often written. <laughs> It's bleeding down. Yeah, <laughs> it's, I mean, yeah, that's kind of weird, but it's somebody happening. Get an overlord there to vomit some health on it ASAP. Look, you at know, those, the, look at those ultras, by the way, Sean. You got to be a fan of these Broodwar ultras, right? Oh, no, I, I love these. I mean, look at just how ugly they are. They are. <laughs> cut, cut, you mean. You mean, uh, yeah, they don't exactly have a lot of uh, thickness going on there. Very, very lean core. They do a lot of sit ups. <laughs> uh, but certainly the hugeness of the tusks, the just that sort of like ivory white sort of bestial look, ah, oh, always brings back good memories. <laughs> I can imagine. The first time I saw them, because I obviously had never seen uh, Ultras in Brood War, I was like, what are these things? They're hideous. And people were like, oh, it's the Brood War Ultra. And I was like, they got to be trolling me right now. Come on. It doesn't look oh, anything. No, it, 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 you'll learn to love it. You'll learn to. You'll come <laughs> yeah. around. Very nice flank from Sue, but I mean, frankly, at what cost? Ultralisks are dealing massive damage, and if you look at the supply, innovation is just still leaps and bounds ahead of Sue. Each attack from Sue is one step closer to an inevitable end, it seems. I mean, innovation just has endless expansions, marine marauder mine forces coming in. Even the beautiful Ultralisks might not be enough. Those plus three Mutalists uh, have done some work in this game, though, I gotta yeah, say. Right. There were a couple of times I was like, no, the Mutalists, you can't fight that. And it's like, well, with plus three flyer attacks, suddenly you can. I'm actually amazed with how many fights Sue did somewhat decently, where I feel like he never should have. But it seems like there is an inevitable ending to this game. That is that Innovation just has too many units. This Ultra refuses to die, but all three Queens will fall. And that's obviously very bad. Oh, no. There's no way, Sean. I refuse to believe it. The, the only way that Sue can really potentially win this is with some absolute miracle mutalisk action. Sue needs to be so careful to keep all these mutalisks alive. I mean, the, the one 
risk that Terrans have at this late stage of the game is that it's hard to defend this many bases. So how do you normally defend it? By being aggressive. If you're always on the offense, you don't have to worry as much about the defense. But Sue still is just struggling to have almost any units at all. I mean, maybe yeah. just pure mutiling. Baneling is, is the way out. Ultralists have really good cleave damage, though. I don't know. I mean, there's just so many bases for innovation. It just always seems to get more. Yep. Innovation is literally mining two times as much as Sue is. And that's just not a position that any Zerg ever wants to Ooh. be in. Because that means you're going to have to deal with a silly amount of Marines. And every single time you get a good fight, innovation is maxed out again and again and again. This is one base that Sue cannot afford to lose. He knows it, so he's going to try his best. But I think this time the Terran army is simply a little too strong, too powerful. And that is going to be it. I mean, this is this is just pure out muscling on innovation's part. Once the three bases were set up for innovation, never ever let up. The mutalists, yeah, you're three zero, but these are Thors, these are Marines that are three three. They deal so much damage to the mutalists. I mean, you don't even really have an opportunity to get the armor upgrade for the mutalists. And there's the question marks and the GG. Yeah, you always have a lot of respect for someone like Sue, who on the way out on a pretty tough loss. Still has a good sense of humor about it, you know? <laughs> I gotta say, uh, it's a little bit of a relief for me that Innovation won this game. Well, A, because I did pick him to win the series. But more importantly, I would have felt legitimately like heartbroken if he loses the game because he has a lag spike. He loses his Reaper to oh, four slow Zerglings. Right. Yeah, and then he gets Roach all in. Well, somewhat all in. Roach pressured, but it was pretty damn committed. I was like, man, like, I wouldn't wish that upon my worst enemy, you know, like losing your Reaper <laughs> to slow Zerglings and then actually being all in where you really needed the Reaper to stay alive. So, not, not even upon your worst enemy would you no, win. Nobody a deserves that. Shot. Lost Reaper. I mean, it's no. a 50 50 unit, right? But, like, not even yeah. on my worst enemy would I wish the loss of that Reaper. No, yeah, it is. It is really rough because one of the really beautiful aspects about StarCraft is just the fragility of so many situations, which is what really gives you the ability to admire these pros so much is that the, the Reaper never dies or the Zerg player that keeps cycling back the Zerglings in the early game and none of those Zerglings ever die. And then you sit down to play and you lose all six Zerglings to the first Reaper and you're like, whoa, Zerg players are good if they can hold this off. And the entire game is one long chain of that. But then when a lag spike comes in and it's the two seconds that you just needed it to not happen and the game's done. I mean, you already lose games of StarCraft by looking in the wrong place for two seconds. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Uh, but that fortunately for us and fortunately for Inno did not happen. And it turned into a really cool game, actually, with a lot of yeah. cool fights. Sue just plays it a little bit different than a lot of these European Zergs, where, you know, a lot of the European Zergs will be like, okay, we'll make a couple mutas, but he just rushes out those muta upgrades. I mean, he had plus three flyer attacks so quickly, and he yeah. got some good fights. But also, he, he took a lot of very adventurous fights, not even on like the edge of creep. But it feels like Bane Link still got a little bit of a speed boost. Like he was he was on the other side of the map fighting near planetaries, you know, with two two upgrades against three three bio. And I was like, Yeah, golly. I don't know how he's doing this, because this is not the way you're supposed to be playing Starcraft 2. I think it was fun to watch. But the uh, final result was, I guess, inevitable as this man is up 2-1 right now, one map away from making it into the quarterfinals of TSL5. It is innovation. And in the bottom left, no risk of elimination as this is the winner's bracket, but still really wanting to pull the comeback. It is the Zerg player, Sue. Golden Wall, once again. Mm -mm -mm. I mean, nom, 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 nom. We've seen a lot of uh, Terran players being a big fan here of taking the gold as their third base. And then they just built like eight barracks <laughs> with a lot of reactors. And they have a silly amount of Marines. At one point where it's like, wait a minute, do we have more Marines than Zerglings? Like, I thought it was supposed yeah. to be the other way around. You know, you get two Zerglings <laughs> for one. <but laughs> I, I do feel like the Zerg investing in the bottom half of Golden Wall is, is a good idea on this map. It's just... It just feels so uncomfortable to have a main base that is this exposed. I mean, main bases have not been this exposed since Metalopolis was in the map. <laughs> like, this is this is a crazy out there angle to try to defend against. And we see it looks like I, I don't know if I'd call this a bunker rush, but maybe just like a 
it's kind of like if you had a perfume, like the aroma of Bunker, right? That's kind of what we're, we're seeing out of innovation. This will rarely ever do much of anything. I mean, I we think see innovation not really reacting much. I think he's trying to sell that he is proxy barracksing or something, and Sue actually didn't really react to it at all. He's like, nah, I, I don't believe it. I'm not buying it. I'm not worried. He, he does have a, his drone there very early on. For a split second, I thought he might be building a spine there, but this is just a fake. I think Inno hoped that Sue would have built, uh, pulled a whole bunch of drones. Now, obviously, the Reaper can hop in that bunker. can still yeah, be yeah. annoying, but I don't think it's going to get much done. Yeah, actually, I, I, I guess I was using my omniscient caster cam to be a little hasty of judgment. You're right. You, If you're a Zerg player, unless you are very composed, you're going to panic build three sunken colonies, <laughs> spine crawlers, and then you're just going to, you know, suddenly go, oh, damn you, Terran, you tricked me, and then try to play it off. But, I mean, if you invest almost anything into this sort of defense, you can just shoot yourself in the foot unnecessarily in a longer game, so incredible composure from Sue, that second overlord that just moved north to be able to spot to see if there were any incoming marines, I think is very, very slick and quite subtle. I think the only thing you can say that innovation achieved with this is that Sue made uh, six initial zerglings, and I think most of the time you'll see zerg plays just make four, right? Four is just the right amount of links to survive against the reaper, and then the queen comes out, and then you can do other stuff with those zerglings. So he technically made one set, one additional set of links, but that's it. Absolutely nothing else happened. Whoa, that's a quick lair, by the way, Sean. We are gonna spice things up over here. Ooh yeah. Now, in terms of the options, I mean, most traditionally you would just say, okay, if it's a faster layer. Mutalisks are the tool that will let you control, especially on a map like this. I was talking about the vulnerability of Zerg, because Zerg is often the defender in the mid game against a lot of the Terran aggression. But here, hey, fast Mutalisks, there's a lot of surface area to hit on the Terran side. Do you think it will be Mutalisks, or maybe there's going to be some other surprise coming from Sue? I mean, I would have, uh, normally I would have been like, you know what, Nidus, because there is a lot of space in the bottom of the main base of Terran as well, right? So you can definitely get some cheeky Nidus positionings on this map. And if this was a Bly game, I would have said Nidus, but uh, I think it's just going to be Spire in this case. I mean, Sue's economy is too strong for a Nidus. He's taking the additional gases. So I think it's just going to be that very quick Mutalisk play. Yeah, but I've, I've given up trying to understand Bly. <clears throat> understand Bly <laughs> as a player, because every time I'm like, Bly is definitely dead. He just attacks three more times and then wins and his drone count is like 11 and he's like oh, yeah, no, pretty straightforward game. <laughs> yeah i've seen I, that players actually recently getting frustrated with bly and i'm not gonna call him out but somebody even wrote it like why can't you just leave like a normal human being <laughs> yeah i mean it's it's like, like like someone like uh you know innovation's traditional play it's like it's like if someone gave their son advice, like, work hard, save money, and you'll have enough for retirement. Like, I can wrap my head around that. But Bly's the sort of person who's like, oh, well, look, if you want to make money, buy a lot of Beanie Babies, and then when it spikes, sell it all and bet on red at the casino. And I'm like, how do you live this way? And yet somehow he's winning, like, all this tournaments and all this money. I mean, I don't know. He is, there is Zerg, and then there is Bly. Yep. No, but it looks it, like it's actually, uh, stack, yeah. One day, I really hope that we can send like a little uh, documentary crew to Ukraine or something and then like make, portrait the life of Bly because he's been doing this for the last 10 years. People keep I'm saying so that his stuff shouldn't work anymore. Everybody knows he's going to do it. And then there's a new map and he's like, oh, Rich Vespian Gus, so nice, you know? <laughs> and, he, <laughs> and he comes up with six new all ins. It's like, how does he do it? It's so good. Well, it looks like the tech choice is the Mutalisks, and also the fast plus one upgrades. Uh-oh, oh. is the queen gonna be able to block the ramp? Yes! Reaper! Reaper wow! Grenade. Reaper grenade, can it reposition? It looks like the Reaper sneaks past. Oh, beautifully done. But that bought just enough time for the Mutalisk to arrive, yeah. and this is not going to be a good attack from innovation. Only two drones down, that's an impressive defense. He actually misplaced the first grenade. The first grenade was way too far towards the back. I think if he would have dropped it a little closer, then the first one would have already knocked it over. And then maybe you get five or six drones there, so it's a little bit better. Now, there are Marines already out. Stim is already done, so I think we should be okay here, especially with a couple of missile turrets going up. And I think that this is just going to turn into a macro game from here on up. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the sort of difference between this and maybe what we've seen previously is that the Mutalisks are going to be much more efficient at delaying and denying Terran than on other maps. And also, just compared to the timing at which Sue got this, Sue has been going three base, 
and then doing Ling Bane Link, and then getting a Spire. This is Spire first. So you already see Innovation reacting by pulling everything back. Stim technically is an option, but you know, you don't want to be wasting too much on Stim since the Mutalisks are so fast. This is going to allow the Creep spread for Sue to pretty much grow unimpeded. The upgrades are quite far behind for Sue, so that's going to be the biggest point of care. Yep. The Zerg's going to take. And with that gold base, we already mentioned it in the beginning of the game. I mean, the marine count is going to be outrageously high, way quicker than we would normally see it in this matchup. And I also love what you pointed out, where you're like, the main base is so exposed on this map. The amount of ZVTs I've seen on Golden Wall, where eventually you end up with a hive on the left top side. Like, I've seen hives at like four different locations on this map already. It's really funny. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's just so fundamental in an RTS game to kind of have a triangle shape at the, at the, one of the corners of the map. You know, your main base is in the far corner, and then you have a second and a third as little extensions, little spokes that sort of trail along the side of the map. And here on Golden Wall, I mean, I always get so uncomfortable when I kind of have this stick of, of my bases, and it's vulnerable around the entire perimeter. And similarly here, look, Innovation begins to think about moving out, and nope, Sue's going to hit the vulnerable goal. Yeah, that's very nice actually, picking up the missile turret makes it a little harder for Innovation to really move out because now he needs to leave quite a few Marines around. I really wouldn't hate it if Inno would go double missile turret at that base because Mudas yeah. are going to keep coming in. It's important as well, the tanks are not see Zobia. Did Innovation get oh, no. away here? Banelings moving in from the north, Mutalists come in from behind and pick off the tanks, but plenty of Marine reinforcements from behind. <laughs> Looks like yeah. Sue just might literally not have enough stuff. Uh, he's got zero bailings at this point, so yes, that is a very big problem. There's a bailing nest as well on top of that ramp. It's really important for Sue that he obviously doesn't lose that. Those bailings, the ones that he has more... Oh, oh no, oh, no, 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 the only bailings! Okay, oh. some of them will finish off. So that's big, but it's still zero bailings at this point. I mean, they come to life just in time. And with the 1-1 upgrades for Sue completed and enough Mutalisks, Sue could potentially completely negate this follow-up. I mean, this is where Mutalisks shine. GG just completely abandoning the game. Tying the series up 2-2. It felt that he was in trouble there because he had no veins. But then those two Banelings finishing up, getting that nice amount of splash damage on those Marines. Then there was one Medivac, which was carrying seven or eight Marines. The Mudas and Queens were immediately able to jump on that Medivac as well, the ones that were carrying the Marines. And suddenly, Innovation is down 26 workers and doesn't have a lot other than an insane amount of Medivacs. We're going to game five again. This is so awesome. And I mean, I really feel like it's a... It's going to be about the Mutalisks, it feels like. Sue has been consistently using this tool in ways that really feel a lot more capable and a lot more offensive than what some of the Zergs have been able to set themselves up to in other matchups. Innovation is an absolute animal in these straight-up macro games. Golden Wall is a little bit unusual of a map, but I'm, I'm surprised at just kind of how straightforward of a game that was. It was just good timing, good control by Sue. I mean, perhaps Innovation just needed to pull back after the first round of Banelings hit and the tanks died. But really, really close series. Yeah, I'm impressed by Sue. I'm very, very impressed. Because even in one of the games that he lost, it felt like he was incredibly competitive and was able to maybe even squeeze out a little advantage here and there. Game 5 is going to be played on Zen. I feel traditionally Terran players do pretty well on Zen. I mean, we know there's a lot of good spots here for Marines. We already had, I still think, my favorite game of the day. I don't know how you see it, but Clam against Dong Regu on Zen. Oh, yeah. I mean, that was sick. I mean, if any of you are just tuning in, that was one of the first matchups we saw in the day, Clem versus Dong Regu. And though I feel like the score betrays how cool and interesting of a series it was, particularly the final game of the series on Zen, was just a magnificent match to watch. It was almost 30 minutes long. Yeah. <laughs> and, I mean, it's uh, 6 p.m. at this point, so we've been going for four hours. I mean, we're still actually... That's like, right, yeah. Yeah, and we're almost at the end of the fourth series, so that's not too bad. We are speedrunning the first one. The first one went really quick. The first five games technically went pretty quick. But after that, you know, I think we've been treated pretty well. I, I still remember when uh, I was at an event with Nick and Dan were both casting, and uh, they were tight on time, so they just had to keep going, like, game to game to game to game to game. And, you know, they were swapping casters off the desk, but Nick just had to go the 
bathroom. He just really, really needed to go. And it was like a Terran versus Terran. I don't remember who was playing, but I remember one of the players was going to win in game number four. And this started to make mistakes and started to become close. And Nick was so mad at the player that messed up because then they would have to immediately go into game five. <laughs> and, then, and then a cheese started and Nick was like, yes, yes, this is the way to play this map. And it was a quick game. He's like, all right, GG, we're out. <laughs> this is something that will happen to anyone who does any on-camera work. There always comes a time where the fact that you're an organism begins to interrupt. <laughs> Yeah, especially if you've done as many events as Nick and Dan. You're going to have a story or two like that, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> All righty, here we go. Zen is going to be the final map of our fourth best of five of the day. In the left bottom side, our Zerg player. A lot of us, kind of included myself, I have to admit, counted him out here. But he's making it competitive. He's making it close. It is Sue. And up in the top right has shirked his reputation as being the king of standard and a mechanical player. Innovation. It's the Terran player. And perhaps going to be a cheesy player? We don't even know anymore, Kevin. Now, we, we know that lately he's been doing a little bit of everything and he made it all look good. Today it's been a little random as well, right? He's definitely showing us a nice variety of builds. Uh, but it also felt like there were a couple of slip-ups here and there by Inno. Where we saw Clem, for instance, be almost flawless in the first two games that he played. Innovation definitely making a few micro errors here and there. Uh, a few times Bainling's getting way more done. And even in that final game, with the amount of drones that Sue had, I really felt that Inno had serious potential in all those Marines. But he got a little over eager, got a little too ahead of himself. And at first it looked somewhat doable because it's like Sue is low on Bane Links. But then Sue is like, yeah, but innovation is low on everything. So if I just make more units, I'm going to be OK here. <laughs> it's such a sort of fascinating logic that's emerged in the you know last few years of Terran Reserve, where with so many expansions being necessary to take, uh, you know, I mean, because obviously the big transition from Heart of the Swarm to Legacy of the Void was a lot of the economic things, starting with 12 workers, limited resources in the, in the mineral patches at, at bases. Seeing the way that Terran players have just become these, ab I mean, it's like watching Mad Max, man. They are just throwing bodies at the top and then swinging around to the bottom and then to the top again and losing tons and just pressure, 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 pressure. Because Terran defenses are really not super great in the late game. Um, I mean, technically, planetary fortresses are very good, but, you know, it's nothing compared to what Banelings can do uh, to sort of tear it down. So it's really just aggression. And with aggression in comes the necessity to have very, very good angling, making sure that you are causing the Zerg player to try to defend by moving away from your bases, but not coming in at such a sharp angle that you can't pull that force back to defend one of your bases. And this map, Zen is especially challenging when you get to late game because six of the expansions are in the center strip. So you somehow have to figure out how to properly allocate your forces from all the way at the bottom to all the way at the top. And it is a big dif uh, distance between those. Absolutely. And we saw that earlier today with Clem against Dong Regu. So I think everything you said is spot on. I think a lot of the things that Sue was doing on Eternal Empire looked really good, right? He had a good economy, did a good job in shutting down the first few initial pushes. And he got a couple of great engagements. It's just that at one point he really started to fall behind on the upgrades. And then when he lost that evil chamber, he could just never really catch back up. It is important that if he wants to play a similar style, that we do get to see a quicker hive, because I think that's the one thing that I'm kind of missing out of Sue's gameplay so far. Yeah, yeah, I mean, like, 3-3. Three, three. We saw Dong Regu and Clem. Once it was 3-3 three, three versus 3-3, three, three, I mean, it was just a dramatic match. But if it's 3-3 three, three versus 2-2, two, two, the Zerg player kind of just slowly peters out. Um, I mean, yeah. the, the it adds up quick. No, you're spot on. It's always the same where it's like, wow, they've got a lot of units. And it's like, wow, that was pretty good for the Zerg despite the upgrades. That was pretty good, but it's always pretty good, right? It's never, wow, yeah, he okay. just crushed that fight being down two upgrades. <laughs> 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 Who, why get any upgrades ever? What, was that the case in Warcraft 3, like when it first came out, where you should never get more than 1-1 one, one upgrades? Yeah, yeah. No, these days, actually, like I obviously still watch a little bit of Warcraft 3. I'm not not spending too much time playing yeah it, yeah i enjoy watching my friends play it like todd the muslim uh, grubby of course as well so uh it's like these days they're actually getting upgrades in warcraft and i'm like damn look at them lining up upgrades and stuff uh in the old days we, we got like maybe a plus one but you only get plus one 
if, if you had the building and you weren't doing anything else, you know, it's like, yeah, right. it's all about the heroes, man. I'd much rather buy and not a close of attack for my Blade Master than get an upgrade. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And innovation is going for one of the most map controlly of styles. Getting the, okay, everything I just said is a lie. He's sending the Hellions straight in, gets two very nice wow. lineups against these drones. Oh my goodness. And this should not be this effective. It's just five Hellions. The Queens are trying to block, and the Hellions what? are just bombing in. Is it, it going to be another shot? 16? Really? 17? I mean, this 18? is... 18? <laughs> Hold on, yeah. one more. Here it comes. 19? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, yes, because there is a cloak bench. Yeah, right? <laughs> Don't think I wasn't ready to say 19, Roddy. The, uh, I mean, gosh. 21? Typically, you'd say that Hellion Banshee is the standard control the map exploit weakness play. Mm -hmm. You scan, you pick off all these creep tumors, the Hellions can push back queens. If a queen is out of position, the Banshees deal so much damage that them and the Hellions can just easily clean stuff up. And the big danger for the Zerg is that even though this tends to be just a really calm map control, you maybe pick off a little bit. If you're out of position once, the Hellions walk in and line them up. That's exactly <laughs> what we saw. I love that by Inno, though, because he just saw a severe lack of Zerglings. And then obviously sometimes that can be a trap and you don't want to do this. But he's like, no, I really feel like you barely made any links. I'm going to try my luck. And then Sue's like, damn it, caught with my hand in the cookie jar. I indeed have no <laughs> Zerglings. I've got queens, but that's it. Now these benches are going to show up in the main base as well. And Sue just cannot afford to lose more drones. I mean, he's going to end up losing seven here. One bench, he does go down. The other one is probably just going to sit here in between these bases for a little bit. The Spire is almost done, but for a Zerg player to take this much economic damage this early on while playing Mutaling Bane, it's going to be very rough. Yeah, the, I mean, the next three minutes are going to be critical for Sue. Sue is just now starting 1-1. Innovation is just now finishing 1-1. I mean, maybe Innovation will accidentally whiff on the Armory. Nope, not a chance. Armory is already getting built at just the right time. It's all about what can these Mutalists do aggressively. And frankly, I think one of the first things they should do is take out this Banshee, but that's just me. <laughs> yeah, the bench still sit there, and this is also Zen. Kind of mentioned this in the beginning of the day with Clem against Dongrik, who uh, we never yeah. really saw it. But there are a lot of very good tank spots on this map where the tanks are going to be safe and they'll protect uh, the Marines. At the same time, Sue apparently is counterattacking. A medevac gets shot down in the main base. Can Sue get some damage done on the other side of the map? It seems like the answer is no. So he is going to be forced to deal with these Marines and that tank. But this fight so far, Sean, it ain't pretty. Well, the thing that's really nice is this uh, interesting tactic from Sue seemed to get back to the main base a little bit delayed. But what's actually happening is that Sue has prevented any reasonable reinforcement opportunities from innovation and can just march right in. The only thing that really went down is some queens, but at this phase of the game, that's fine. Ten more Mudas, by the way, for Sue. <laughs> he makes more yeah. Mudas than any other Zerg that I've seen. Like, I know a couple of European Zergs who love to uh, make a, their fair share of Mudas in this matchup. But Sue is just like, can I make 40? And it's like, well, yeah, if you really want to, but you need to have yeah. Banelings too, mate. <laughs> You know, I mean, I feel like Ling Baneling is like a build order unit. If you did the correct timings of when you should have built this, that, and the other, like, you're going to have enough Ling Baneling for the attack, but you can't really do a lot more with Ling Baneling, not compared to the Mutalist, which is like a, a highly tactical unit. You can find little opportunities like this, and look, the Mutaling is just streaming into the main base. Innovation, I guess, is going to try to continue to commit to this attack at the bottom, but oh. this is a huge break-in from Sue, and the wow. Mutalist so mobile, and now four medevacs worth of stuff streaming into the main base of Sue. Sue is just going to sit on top of the production, maybe try to shut that down, and this is, might turn into exactly what you we're talking about of a layer and a hive in weird spots. 34, 35 workers down. There is no more economy left. The spawning pool gets picked off. The spire gets picked off. Neither of these players is going to be able to make anything. Oh, I don't know. Bailey's in the main now. base. It's super important for innovation that he really babysits these Marines because he has taken oh, oh, so much oh. damage at home. He needs to keep all of his Marines alive. Did a Bane link connect? It did, right? Yeah, Bane links in, like just spawn barely in time and picked everything off. The spawning spawning pool has started again. And now we see Sue with Lings and Mutalisks in the main base. Innovation continues to produce like crazy out of them. And even though it's just Marines, I mean, there's enough Marines popping out, plus that four, 
that I actually think Innovation is going to be able to stabilize in the main base. Meanwhile, Sue's main is gone. It is no longer on the map. This is a crazy match. Yeah, and since it's Zen, it also means that if you take care of the main, you technically take care of the natural too, right? Because you yep. can take the high ground there, and then you, can, you are in range of that mineral line. Sue has done a tremendous job, though, on the other side of the map. I really thought that this was never going to be a close game. He even got both eBay, so it's not like he's down and upgrades. But he, like if Sue spends his money, I think he could win. But can he ever get enough larva to spend his money? Like, he is oh. taking hatcheries everywhere. He needs to inject, inject, inject. Because if Stu can spend that banger he's sitting on, he's sitting on 1,800 minerals. That's insane. This whole innovation, I think, maybe made an error by not rebuilding these barracks soon enough. I mean, right now, how many Marines are there? 11. That's it. 11 Marines and done. Oh my we have God. more Banelings than that possible. Eight Banelings out right now, and innovation is sort of floating over. Surprise, even. What, is there an opportunity to drop any of this? I guess we go home. The natural expansion from innovation is trying to float away, and it's going to fall. That is a critical orbital command. That is exactly what you need as a Terran player to try to restabilize after this much damage early on. And now innovation is just making Widow Mines trying to do a tank marine drop at this angle. Brilliant angling from innovation. Yeah, that is actually a really good position on the tank. So innovation will be able to shut this down as well. This is going to be one base against one base, but now links are going to show up as well oh. on the other side of the map. I think Innovation needs to go home, otherwise he's gonna lose absolutely everything. Like, he's got nothing here. There are no units for Innovation. He needs to basically win the game with 11 Marines and two tanks. I don't think even Innovation can do that. There's a Viking somewhere. I mean, at this point in time, you're trying to find any unit that you can. And those medevacs, they're getting a little bit low on energy. I mean, this has been a lot of healing, a lot of stimming. Over here, we see no more barracks. No more workers mining and about to be no more command center. I mean, innovation is going to get revealed soon enough. Innovation just needs to keep every single Marine alive, needs to pick off this spawning pool. That means no more Zerglings, no more reinforcements. But I don't know, Kevin, this is just so many Zerg units. Yep, and we're still on creep as well, right? So how can 11 Marines survive all of this? Stu can actually eliminate innovation, but he's like, no, I'm not going to eliminate him. I'm going to eliminate the Wow! Army. <laughs> With the upset. lightning in a bottle. What a game. What you know, that game. is the most Sue game I've ever seen. Where it felt like he was in a horrible position. And then he's just like, 1-1, one, one, Muda Ling Bane. I'm going to run to the other side of the map and I'm going to bust your natural. And yeah, we'll see how it goes. And it, it turns out to be brilliant. Because Innovation is playing this super late game where he has a lot of forces in the right bottom side of the map and he's trying to deny potential yeah. fifth bases. And Sue's so like, no, I'm not worried about that. I'm going to go for the production. And it, it felt that Inno always thought he's going to turn around. He's going to have to deal with this army eventually. Well, yeah. it, it turns out he never did. Yeah, it turns out, unfortunately, nope, I guess is the way you describe it as. I mean, the... Like, if we think about... Um, I guess game three it was, where Innovation just got to go three base and just play normal and just, you know, start attacking. And we saw Sue just play, you know, being normal and defending and defending and defending. And, you know, we have, you know, Zerg players like Raynor who are famed for their counterattacks or Dong Regu who tried to pull off some of those Ling counterattacks. But Sue really hit Innovation at a time when the Terran player typically thinks there is no way the Zerg is going to be trying to counterattack me, period. Maybe with some Zerglings, I'll yeah. you know, have some supply depots lifted, but I mean, you don't expect the Zerg army to come in. And just by doing that, I feel like the, the big attack that knocked out the natural and eventually knocked out the main from Sue was set up by the first time that Sue did that. Because that little isolated pile of units at the bottom, Sue was able to pick up extremely easily, like like almost no losses when he eliminated those tanks, marines, and medevacs. And I think that that meant the follow-up push from Innovation committed too many units to this push all the way down at the bottom side. Sue saw it, knew there was no way for defense to happen, and punished it in a way that I would not be comfortable doing. That is a very bold, like, oh yeah, I'll just lose all, all everything. But uh, he lost everything faster, so there you go. No, that's a, that's a brilliant call that I think only a world-class Zerg player like Sue can make it. It feels like it goes against everything we would ever recommend any Zerg to do. But in this case, it was actually probably his only way of winning this game. Because if he plays it out in a normal way, Inno is going to be too rich, too many units, too far ahead in upgrades. Absolutely brilliant by Sue. I love it. Couldn't even see the opening without Fog of War. He saw it through Fog of War. Well done.
And that is, uh, I think, another upset today. And that also means that we are wow. now at the halfway point. Still doing fine, Sean? Dude, it's been a great morning. However, I will note, I'm going to continue to drink a lot of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are going to have a couple minutes to do so, because, guys, we're going to head over to another break. And after that, we'll be back with the next best of five. That is going to be a TVT, maybe for mm. the ages. I hope so. Between Cure and Special. Should be really good. Stay tuned. You're watching Team Liquid Star League Season 5. We stand as one. Are you going to give me orders?